Well, hello there. I just want to give my take on the ship that crashed in Baltimore. The, the Dali crashed into a bridge and unfortunately six people are believed to have lost their lives. Um, but anyway, there's a couple of things that you need to know about a ship, just to give you a frame of reference before I continue on with my little story. Every, every single ship, when it has sea trials initially, those, those uh, steering and, and performance readings that they take will be written down on a card and given to the pilot. Uh, so every pilot will know exactly how that ship operates when they, when they take it out to sea. Now, a pilot isn't in control of that ship. A pilot is only there to advise the master. The master's in control. Uh, there's only a few places where the pilot is uh, in, con total, in total control. One of those is Panama Canal and the other one is um, a, a very narrow strait in Argentina, I believe. Um, I have been there years ago. Anyway, getting on. Also, a ship will have an emergency generator. This emergency generator will provide emergency power for steering, for lighting, for the radio. It will also provide power for the air compressor because ship's engines are started with compressed air. Uh, and it will also provide power for the emergency fire pump. Now, the characteristics of a ship's propeller is that when they go ahead or astern, they act a bit like a paddle wheel on a ship. So when you go ahead, not on the, on the big container ships that I was on, every ship's propeller turned in a clockwise direction. When viewed from a stern, if you're looking forward, the shaft will rotate in a clockwise direction. And that would result when, when you're, obviously if you were stationary at sea and you started off, the back end would be, would be thrown. It's going in a, start, in a clockwise direction. So that means that it's being driven starboard. And the bow is going to port. The same happens when you go astern. When you drive an engine astern, the paddle wheel effect means that the, that the back end of the ship will go to port and the bow will go to starboard. So remember that, because we'll need to know that later. So anyway, I've been watching these videos and I've been noting down some times. And um, firstly, I, I think that there was a pilot on board because it's a, it looks like a very complicated port to get in and out of. So there will have been a pilot on board. Now, all this happened at about 24 minutes past one in the morning. So instead of calling it one o'clock every time, I just, I just refer to the minutes and seconds. So at 24 and 32 seconds, the ship suffered its first blackout. Now, the ship would have been plunged into darkness and... Uh, all panic would have set loose. Now there would have been only two engineers down in that engine room. I'm an engineer, so I can only give it as an engineering point of view. Um, so there would have been two engineers down that engine room, chief engineer and another engineer, the duty engineer. Now they would have been plunged in complete, into complete darkness and uh, they would have waited for the emergency lights to kick in. That literally happened straight away. So the minute you have a blackout, the emergency lighting should kick in so they can, they can see what they're doing slightly, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, the emergency generator would have appeared to have kicked in at 59 seconds later because that's when power was restored. At 25 and 32, 31 seconds rather, power seems to have been restored because from the video, you can see that the lights have been turned on again. Now, a few seconds later, this is 11 seconds later, you can see lots of black smoke coming from the exhaust. Now, I would, I would think that black smoke would indicate that the engine was under a lot of load. So I'm assuming that they went into a crash astern move. This would have been full astern, hence all the black smoke. Now, as I told you about the uh, the paddle wheel effect of the propeller, you can see the ship start to turn. 
Now, as it turns a stern, uh, it will it will drive the the stern of the ship over to port, and the bow will start pointing to starboard. Now, the ship won't have stopped because the ship at that point was travelling at eight point seven knots. A few minutes later, it was actually travelling at seven point six knots, and so it was slowing down. So I I. My uh, initial thought was that the ship was going astern is probably justified. So at 26.37, the boat suffers its second blackout. You can see because all the lights go dark. And to their credit, within 33 seconds later, power is restored a second time. Now, I think that they probably hadn't had a full blackout. I think that the generators had just simply tripped off the board and the first time took them took them a minute to realise what was going on and to and to put the main generators back on the board to allow it to go into a stern. Uh, because like I said the emergency generator doesn't provide power to drive the main engine. There there just won't be enough power. And there won't be enough power to drive the bow thruster. Now, the bow thruster isn't effective over, over three or five knots, whatever it is. The bow thruster will not have any effects whatsoever. And, uh, and as we see it from the, from the data, it was doing 7.6 knots when it crashed. So the bow thruster wouldn't have done anything, even if they had enough time to get it working. So at 28.44, the crash occurred. So from start to finish, this was four minutes and 12 seconds. This, that's really, when, when things are, when I say the, the, uh, the brown stuff hits the fan, that's not really a long time. Um, you know, it won't really have been enough time for them to come out of the engine room and gone down to the steering gear to do the emergency steering. And they don't think they would have had much time to get up to the emergency generator. It may have taken them two minutes to get to the emergency generator. If it's anything like the ships I've been on, uh, it, you would have had to have gone out onto deck and uh, gone into the emergency generator via the deck, uh, simply because you don't want an emergency generator in an engine room. Uh, if there is a fire, you need to have some power in a, in a place which is protected from that engine room. Uh, so... Yeah, my thoughts is that this wasn't an attack by the Russians. I think this is a series of misfortunate events uh, that occurred. Now, I, I think that uh, possibly they did the wrong thing. I'm not saying they did. I'm not saying they didn't. I'm, I'm saying, in my opinion, I think that what they should have done, instead of going astern, which turned the ship to starboard, uh, and drove it into the, the leg of that bridge. What they should have done was they should have gone ahead, used the volume of water that would be pushed past the rudder to correct its course. Well, it didn't correct its course by going astern. It made things worse. So that may be something that comes out of the investigations because there will be an investigation. There is a society called the, the Marine Accident Investigation Bureau. Uh, M-A-I-B. They will do a full investigation and in time that uh, their findings will be published. Now we get these booklets on board ship of every single accident that happens at sea is written down and is publicised in books. Just got to need a drink and wet my whistle. So that will come out in due course and that'll be interesting reading but uh yeah I, this is what i believe happened i think somehow uh i mean these things happen generators do just suddenly trip off the board for no reason i've, I've seen it myself and uh of course it could have been another reason uh, it, but there will be millions of reasons why it tripped off it could be electrical mechanical and uh it could have been human error. 
So that all that uh, will be taken into consideration when they do their investigation. Now, m most of these big container ships run on low sulfur fuel in port, especially America, where they, they force you to change the fuel on board. They change the fuel f when, you, when you're out at sea, before you come into port, they make you change over to a low sulfur fuel. And probably when you're at sea, you're probably running on normal fuel, which is a bit more expensive. Uh, sorry, bit, normal fuel is cheaper, but the low sulfur fuel would be slightly more expensive. So obviously to keep costs down, they like to run the, the normal fuel all the time. So maybe, just maybe, as the ship was leaving port, they changed over to the normal fuel just to give it a couple of hours uh, to fully mix with the settling tanks and stuff before, you know, it, as they were traveling out, um, you, they would have switched over to the normal fuel. And that fuel may have caused the ship to black out, uh, but we don't know. But there's lots of things to think about in this scenario. And uh, uh, my heart does go out to the families of those six people that they say have died. Uh, hopefully there won't, won't be any more missing people. But that's it. That's my conclusion. I think that the captain went astern uh, as, well, after the blackout. Um, the ship's steering, by the way, is hydraulic. And you, once the power's off, that's it. It's locked. I think that the ship was... Uh, the, or the rudder was in the ahead position. And uh, the, as a result of the blackout, was blackout, it, they, they couldn't steer it anyway. Until the emergency generator kicked in, then you'd have steering. But I think what happened was... I think I really do think he went astern and that's what caused the ship to to suddenly veer off to starboard and then ending up in that bridge. But anyway, I've rubbish it on. So 12 minutes of uh, me giving you absolute rubbish. So I'll catch you all on the next one. See you.